Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and we've done a lot of cute undies and things for the lady dolls, so today we're going to make something for the guys. I've got a couple patterns for boxers I've made and put on my site for download, but since I can't possibly make something for every size of a doll, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make your own pattern for boxers, or regular shorts, from a pants pattern. There are lots of patterns for pants out there, and if you don't have one specifically for your doll, you can start with a pattern drawn from my leggings tutorial too, so you'll be sure it fits. So this is my SID pajama pants pattern, which is already kind of a relaxed fit, so it won't need much work. I trace around the top part of both halves, front and back. If you're a messy tracer like me, you'll want to straighten up your lines a little with a ruler after you trace. Then we're going to decide where the bottom edge of this new pattern will go, starting with the inseam. When you draw this, make sure you leave enough space for your seam allowance at both ends of this line. Measure down from the peak of the pattern that goes in the crotch, and mark your line. This can be however long you want it to be. You'll want this to be the same length for both front and back pieces, so that the pieces will line up nicely. Then, to close the bottom, make sure you start with the front piece. I just kind of eyeball it and go straight across. Once the bottom is closed, I measure the length of that outside edge, and this tells me how long to make the outside edge on the back as well. So when you measure down and mark the length on the outside edge of the back piece, you might find that this makes the bottom edge of your back pattern piece sit at an angle. This is totally normal, and that little slope will help your doll sit in these underpants without having a wardrobe malfunction. You could stop here and just sew that. Or, completely optional, you could be like me and decide to add a fly front opening. Add an allowance for the addition of the fly by measuring down the center front of the pattern and putting a mark just above the point where the crotch curve begins. Extend the top edge out a quarter of an inch to accommodate this new seam allowance. Then extend out horizontally from that mark we just made at the top of the curve. When these two lines are connected vertically, it adds a little flap to the center front which is where our opening will be. If you choose to add the fly front, you'll also need to draw a piece for the fly itself. This should be the length of that little flap you just added. For me, that's 7 centimeters, and it's just a rectangle. For width, regardless of the doll's size, you probably don't want this piece to be much smaller than an inch wide, because beyond that, it's just too small to manage. I make mine 3 centimeters wide, which is about an inch and a quarter, and that's plenty for what we need it to do. Remember, this includes your seam allowance for sewing this on, so once I get this attached, this piece will only be a bit over a quarter of an inch wide. It's kind of funny, because when I started this project, I drafted a pattern for SID boxers from measurements, and it ended up being literally identical to this pants pattern, since it's for the same doll and I took the same measurements. I figured pattern adaptation would be easier for most people to follow than drafting. This particular pattern I've made doesn't have a waistband piece. I find that easier to sew, so if you start with a pattern that has a waistband, you might want to omit the waistband piece and make the top of the pants pattern a little taller, so that the waistband is built in. For smaller dolls, or these big guys even, you might also find that you want to omit the side seam to reduce bulk or avoid having to match up patterns. You can do this by just putting the back and front pieces together with the side seam together, tape them to make one pattern piece, and you're done. I'm not doing it that way because the piece of fabric I'm cutting from is really narrow, so I can't fit that big of a piece on here. One last thing to watch out for though is making sure your pattern is wide enough. These pieces already have a loose fit and a seam allowance built in, so I know they'll fit that way. But if you're using, say, a pattern for leggings, you'll want to add space to this edge of the pattern, make it a little bit wider, so that the boxers you sew don't end up being skin tight. Boxer briefs fit that way, but that's not what we're making today, so extend your pattern right here if it's snug. So now we can finally start putting together our underpants. Starting with the two fly pieces, I fold them in half and pin them shut, right side out, so they stay folded just how I want. Then I'll put the fly against the right side of the front of the boxers, 
lining up the raw edge of the fly with the raw edge of the little seam allowance flap we added to that front piece. Sew the fly to the front with a straight stitch. Nice and simple. Do this for both front pieces, so that they're a mirror image of each other. Then finish the edge where the fly and front are connected together with a zigzag stitch. Once both sides of the front are sewn, put them together with right sides together. Now we'll sew the bottom of the fly closed. Sew from the edge of the fly in toward the middle of the garment until you reach the edge of the fly fabric. Then turn and sew down along the curve to close the front crotch. If the pattern you're using doesn't have a fly, then you'll just sew this whole front curve closed in one go. Finish this edge with a zigzag stitch too. When you flip this right side out, ta-da! Easiest fly you'll ever make. Next, we'll put the front and back pieces together with right sides together and sew the side seams closed. If you chose to eliminate the side seam in your pattern, you can obviously skip this step. Otherwise, sew these together, backstitching at the beginning and end of each seam. Since we'll be finishing some seams next, I take a second to fold the fly nicely and pin it shut. One thing I've noticed about myself is I'm really good at getting fabric stuck and sewn where I don't want it, so making things easier to manage for myself is a good idea. If your pattern has side seams, go ahead and finish those edges with a zigzag stitch. Then it's time to start working on the waistband. You'll want a piece of elastic that fits comfortably around your doll's waist. I usually put elastic around my doll, pin it, and cut it off instead of trying to deal with measurements on stretchy stuff. Unlike pants, the waist of boxers don't open at the fly, because they rely on elastic for the fit. Which means this fly is 100% useless on a doll, even for dressing purposes, but who cares. Finish the whole top edge with a zigzag stitch. This will sew the top edge of the fly closed, but that's fine, we've got extra space built in for the waistband. Make sure all your threads are clipped, then fold the top edge to the inside, about half an inch. A little more is fine, but a little less will get you in trouble, so err on the side of more. I check the sides together to make sure my waistband is a consistent width, so that my sides will match up later. I'm not sewing the waistband itself shut just yet. Instead I add a line of top stitching along the very top edge of it, which will help it stand up straighter. This is really narrow, maybe 1 16th of an inch, or like 2 millimeters. It's really small, but it gives a really nice end result. Next, we'll determine how wide the channel for the elastic needs to be. My elastic is about a quarter inch wide. You'll want to slide this up under the flap we just made and push it all the way up against the top seam. I pin my elastic there so I can feel around for the edge. It's right here, so I move down just a shade and put in a pin to mark where I want the bottom seam to go. I don't always have the same size of elastic on hand, so figuring out how to fit different sizes of elastic is a good thing. The elastic should slide freely through a channel this size, and it looks like mine does. 
so I pull out the elastic for now and pin the whole waistband down. I find it's easier to thread the elastic back through later instead of risking it getting caught in my stitches. Sew the bottom of the waistband closed with a straight stitch. There we go, waistband done. After I trim all the threads, I put a safety pin through one end of the elastic and use that to feed the elastic back through the channel in the waistband we just made. I'm slow at this so we'll fast forward a bit. Your elastic will obviously be shorter than the full length of the waistband, so make sure you pause before the elastic gets pulled all the way in. I pin the elastic in place at the edge when there's just a little tail left. Then finish feeding it through. I'll pin it in place at the other end and remove the safety pin. Now we can close the back center seam. Fold the boxers so the right sides are together and line up and pin that center back curve. I like to start at the waistband because it doesn't matter if the crotch part doesn't line up exactly right. But if the waistband isn't level, you'll definitely notice it. Keep the pins in your elastic too, or your elastic might escape. Then sew the curve closed. Be sure to go slowly over your elastic, and backstitch over it a few times to make sure it's really locked in place. Trim off the extra elastic and finish the edge with a zigzag stitch. So the top is done, that's the hardest part. Now we just have to finish the bottom. Start by running a zigzag stitch along the bottom edge of each leg. After the edges are finished, you have the option of making a rolled hem by folding the edge once and then folding it on itself again. Or you can just fold it once. I originally intended to do a rolled hem on these, then I decided it would be too bulky. So instead, I fold the edge up a half inch or so and sew it down that way. Since that was a last minute decision, it was a bad one. And you'll notice I didn't measure it out or anything. Shame on me. I looked at the guidelines on my machine, but that was it. I didn't check to make sure anything else was straight, so I make things a little more difficult for myself in the next step. Measure twice, cut once, they say, and that's true of sewing too. Measure twice, sew once. It doesn't matter how much experience I have, I still mess stuff up, especially when I get cocky. So because I didn't check my hem sizes, my inseam doesn't quite match up. You can see the back is a bit longer from hem to hem than the front. But this isn't too hard to fix. The goal is to sew from the hem of one leg up to the crotch, then down to the hem of the other leg. Since boxers are a loose pattern, they're pretty forgiving. So I pin the leg hems and then shift the middle around until the center crotch seams line up. I was only off by about a quarter of an inch, which would be nothing in human size, but it makes a big difference for dolls. I pin this in place where it fits well, and sew the inseam closed, going up one leg and down the other. Then I can cut off that extra little triangle of fabric where I messed up the fit. I'll finish that seam with a zigzag stitch, and I'll be more careful next time.
and now we're done. You have the option of adding a button or a snap to the fly front just for an extra hint of realism, but it's not necessary. This isn't big enough to need something to hold it closed. So I skip it for now and put these boxers right onto Vaughn, my Apple House SID Claude. Looking good, buddy. Even if your wig did get smashed during moving. Oops. But that's it for today. Thanks for joining me again. Bye.